By 1973, with the US crippled by the OPEC embargo, Congress is forced to call for the one man who knows the real facts. But Hubbard, 71 now, dismisses the crisis as temporary. Instead, he informs the House that peak oil means the end of Western civilization as we know it, unless we act now. The news seems to stun lawmakers and has two interesting results. One, Hubbard's figures are accepted, finally, 17 years after that fateful talk before the American Petroleum Institute in 1956. The other result is that Congress does nothing about peak oil for the next 30 years. Successive presidents have offered grand words on US national energy policy. In 1973, Richard Nixon launches Project Independence with the promise, If our energy resources are properly developed, they can fulfill our energy requirement for centuries to come. President Gerald Ford pushes the date for energy independence back to 1985. In the middle of the Iran oil crisis, Jimmy Carter pledges, Beginning this moment, this nation will never use more foreign oil than we did in 1977. Never. He sets a new date for energy independence. 1990. Reagan's answer is one word. Deregulation. The first Bush throws $200 million at Detroit's automakers to develop electric vehicles. Though technically viable, every single car is recalled and destroyed. Bill Clinton is more pragmatic. He proposes a tax on crude. It doesn't pass. As for the second George Bush... By applying the talent and technology of America, this country can dramatically improve our environment, move beyond a petroleum-based economy, and make our dependence on Middle Eastern oil a thing of the past. The results of all this presidential leadership? Total dependence on foreign oil, not to mention debt, and runaway consumption with no regard for conservation. Fact. The US possesses 2% of the world's oil resources. It consumes 45% of the world's energy. Our story began with a war, and it ends with one. Only this war seems very much like a war on us. The truth is, our oil producers and our elected representatives have ignored the consequences of peak oil for decades. Instead, they have systematically misreported reserve figures and further done everything in their power to keep the real data under wraps. For them, peak oil serves a purpose only when it can drive up their profits and guarantee wealth and power for an increasingly small group of people. If peak oil makes us question our addiction to fossil fuels, Suddenly, we're told there is nothing to fear. That's because in the war on us, big oil's big weapon is information and disinformation. The people that were talking about this until very recently have been quickly relegated to the lunatic fringe. Only now are people beginning to ask the big questions. US national energy policy is a secret. Why? Open-ended wars threaten regions strategically vital to oil production. In whose interest is that? And then the real big question. Why haven't we taken massive emergency measures to decrease our dependence on hydrocarbon fuels and end the mirage of peak oil once and for all? Now, you know, we really had about 30 years warning that this was going to happen. Answering these questions isn't nearly as difficult as asking them in the first place. But to be able to ask, first we must see through the mirage. I'm a bit of America. I'm a bit of the world.